Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about the best stocks to buy and the latest stock market news updates that investors need to know about. With that being said, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now, subscribe if you are new, comment down below your thoughts about any or all of these stories, and with that being said, let's get right into it. Recently, stocks have jumped up in their respected prices, which has pushed all three major indexes up, which would include the NASDAQ, the S&P 500, and the Dow. Jones. The reason why the indexes are up right now is because a slew of strong earnings results came in from a plethora of companies, some of which we will talk about in this video. Specifically, one of the companies that impressed Wall Street recently was General Motors, which ticked up after it beat on their profit expectations and they also raised their annual outlook, which was very good. But General Motors is not the only automobile manufacturer that we want to talk about today because next up we have Tesla, ticker symbol TSLA. Tesla if you didn't know, is an electric vehicle manufacturer which also specializes in things such as energy storage, energy generation, as well as artificial intelligence. For the first time since 2020, this electric vehicle manufacturer had their quarterly revenues drop and they fell all the way down to $21.3 billion. To make matters even worse, Tesla's profits also sunk to a six-year low and the company said earlier this month that it only delivered 386,810 cars during the first quarter which represents an 8.5% decrease from that same time period but a year ago. Clearly, this is not doing good things for their share price because the stock is now hovering around their 52-week low after their market capitalization shed roughly $350 billion worth of value during the quarter. Now, in my personal opinion, while a Tesla is receiving a lot of these negative news updates, right now is probably one of the best times to buy into this company because of their phenomenal future catalysts. But we're not done talking about the negative news for this company just as of yet. The company also said that they only delivered around 4,000 cyber trucks and nearly all of these cyber trucks were recalled due to an issue with the vehicle's acceleration pedal. On top of that, Tesla is also continuously slashing the prices of their electric vehicles which is negatively impacting their margin and thus negatively impacting their revenues and their profitability. But there is good news here because Tesla's share price despite this bad news increased radically in after hours trading and this is is mainly because the company vowed to accelerate the launch of their more affordable electric vehicle models. On top of that, they also announced that they are further working on integrating their ride hailing technology into their app, and this is going to take a huge bite out of Uber's market cap. You see, once Tesla integrates robo taxis into their overall revenue network, this is going to be phenomenal for this company. So until then, I suggest doing your own research on this company to determine whether or not right now is a good buying opportunity, because for me personally, I am buying this company hand over fist right now because they are fundamentally solid, but always make sure to do your own research. Next up, we have Spotify, ticker symbol SPOT, which is a music streaming platform, and they are also trying to integrate themselves into things such as audiobooks as well as podcasts. This music streaming giant, according to the article, grew their revenues last quarter by 20% up to $3.8 billion on a record amount of profit to where they brought in $180 million worth of profit, which they announced yesterday. So this is phenomenal news for this company. But the good news doesn't stop there because the company also raised prices in 2023 for the first time in the last 10 years as it further expands beyond music into various categories such as audiobooks and podcasting. After all of this good news was released, Spotify's shares soared by approximately 11% following these positive news updates, and I think this company clearly deserves that. You should also be aware that Apple, ticker symbol AAPL, which is a gigantic technology company which I personally hold in my portfolio, is currently in negotiations with FIFA. According to the article, FIFA and Apple are nearing a deal to stream a World Cup style tournament on Apple TV Plus next year. Obviously, this is going to cause many people to sign up for Apple TV Plus, which is going to greatly impact Apple's overall revenue. So this is a very smart move in regards to Apple, which we could see a very positive reflection in their respected share price. I also want to make you aware of a Starbucks catalyst, because according to the article, the Supreme Court appears likely to side with a Starbucks Bucks over the National Labor Relations Board in the case about fired union activists. If you didn't know, Starbucks is a very successful coffee chain and they have been in hot water recently because they fired union activists. After the firing, a lawsuit ensued 
and it seems that the Supreme Court is likely to side with Starbucks, which is going to act as a positive catalyst for this company, so overall this is pretty good news. Now in macroeconomic news, we actually see a specialist who believes that the SP500 and the general stock market will crash by around 44%. However, I completely disagree with him and here's why. But first, let's go over his claims. He says that the S&P 500 is at risk of plunging 44% to around a four-year low. He even says that selling stocks well before they crash can yield outsized returns, and he also says that he can predict a mild recession in the United States economy. This is why he is currently encouraging his clients to cycle out of stocks and into bonds. However, here's why I disagree. First, I don't think it's wise to try to predict the stock market in the short term. Instead, investing consistently over a long period of time is going to give you a very consistent strategy to building wealth. On top of that, if you sell your stocks and you you are wrong, you are going to lose a large portion of opportunity cost and growth. So honestly, in my opinion, it's just not worth the risk. Lastly, we need to take into consideration that normally after giant pullbacks, crashes, or recessions in the stock market, the general market tends to be very bullish for multiple years afterwards, and it seems right now we are in the midst of that. That's why at the end of the day, trying to predict what the stock market is going to do in the short term is really not a good strategy. Instead, try to find a fundamentally strong companies and invest into indexes or ETFs or even mutual funds that have a very good growth trajectory. To try to find investments like this, I would encourage you to do your own research and look at the history of how the stocks or ETFs, mutual funds, or indexes have performed in the past. Now clearly past results don't dictate future outcomes, but they are a very good predictor, which is why you always need to make sure to do your own research. However, even if the general stock market does plunge by around 44%, I'm just going to buy more aggressively into some of my favorite ETFs, which would include ticker symbol VTI, SCHD, and QQQM. Next up in our stock news, and the best stocks to buy, let's talk about Goldman Sachs, ticker symbol GS, which is a very prominent financial institution which I personally hold in my portfolio. The reason why Goldman Sachs is in the news is because they are pulling the plug on their robo-advisory business, which I found quite interesting. According to the article, Goldman Sachs, which is an investment banking giant, agreed to send its Marcus to Invest clients and their assets to a digital investment company named Betterment. Next up, let's talk about another company which I personally hold in my portfolio, which is none other than Pepsi, ticker symbol PEP. -E if you didn't already know, Pepsi is a gigantic food and beverage company, and I also own Coca-Cola because I like to take a co-optition approach to my investment strategy, which means if I invest into one company, I'm also going to invest into their most prominent competition. As an example, if I invest into Home Depot, I'm also going to invest into Lowe's. If I invest into Walmart, I will also invest into Target. And if I invest into Pepsi, I will also invest into Coca-Cola. But now let's talk more about Pepsi because they recently had fantastic financial results. According to the article, Pepsi topped Wall Street sales estimates for quarter one, even though U.S. shoppers traded down from pricey named brand stacks to more generic snacks. Yet despite this transition, Pepsi saw their sales jump by around 9%, which reflected very positively in their revenues. In essence, this was a great news update for Pepsi, and I am a proud holder of this company in my portfolio. But if you want to invest into this company, always make sure to do your own research so you can verify whether or not it's good for you. Next up, let's talk about a technology giant named Meta Platforms, ticker symbol META, which I also personally hold in my portfolio. However, it seems that Meta wasn't as lucky as Pepsi in regards to their earnings results results, but I personally think that investors are being irrational, and here's why. Recently, Meta stock sank in their respected share price, and if you didn't know, Meta is the parent company to various platforms such as Facebook and Instagram. The company recently reported their first quarter results, which apparently failed to live up to sky-high expectations from investors. However, I think investors are completely wrong here. When we look into the company's financial results on their earnings report, we actually see that this company beat consensus estimates for both sales and earnings. The company was supposed to bring in earnings of $4.32 per share, but they actually brought in $4.71 per share. Likewise, the company was supposed to bring in revenues of $36.14 billion, but they actually beat that estimate to bring in $36.46 billion. And this is very good news, which should have invigorated investors to push their share price higher. However, there is bad news here, and the bad news comes in the form of two various things. And the first one would be total expenses. Currently, Meta is pushing to be a leader in artificial intelligence, and this is adding to their costs. 
As of right now, the company's expenses are rising because the company is investing into infrastructure to support their AI roadmap. However, as of right now, it seems that AI is costing them more than what it's bringing in for them, but hopefully this will change over the long term. The second problem with this company is that the company's management gave lackluster projections for their finances. According to the article, Meta guided for their sales to be around $37.75 billion at the midpoint, which fell short of expectations of $38.25 billion. However, despite all of this, this company is still a very fundamentally solid company. Meta's CEO, who is Mark Zuckerberg, even had this to say, and I quote, I view the results our teams have achieved here as another key milestone in showing that we have the talent, data, and ability to scale infrastructure to build the world's leading AI models and services. He goes on to say, and this leads me to believe that we should invest significantly more over the coming years to build even more advanced models and the largest scale AI services in the world, end quote. It seems apparent that this is a very ambitious endeavor, but honestly, it seems that meta platforms could do this, which is why I personally am a heavy investor in this company. Next up, let's talk about Chipotle stock, which is a fast casual food chain. Chipotle, if you didn't know, is a Mexican grill, and recently, they also released very positive earnings results. According to the article, in the first quarter, their revenue grew by 14.1%, up to $2.7 billion. But the good news doesn't stop there, because the company also also beat expectations on their bottom line, with adjusted earnings per share coming in at $13.37. This beat was mainly due to their limited time offers like Chicken Al Pastor, which is priced at a premium. On top of that, this fast casual food chain also saw an increase in foot traffic of about 5.4%, which clearly increased their overall revenues. To make things even better, it also expects to open 285 to 315 new locations, with more than 80% of them having drive through this is one of the many reasons why a company like Deutsche Bank wrote in a recent client note saying that Chipotle has been among the best performing restaurant stocks, and honestly, I agree with them. As an investor or a potential investor in this company, you also need to remember that this company is trying to automate their overall services as well. Currently, the company is experimenting with automation in regards to a robot which creates guacamole, which they call Autocado. They are also trying to automate a bowl and salad make line at their restaurants, which is going to save them a lot of money if they don't have to pay employees. So, in general, I would say this company is a very strong stock to hold in your portfolio, but always make sure to do your own research before you make any investment decision. We also have Humana stock in the news, which is experiencing something very similar to what is happening over at Meta Platforms. In my personal opinion, investors are overreacting in regards to what has happened with Humana stock, ticker symbol HUM. Over the past 12 months, it seems that investors have been gravitating away from this health insurance company. However, I would say that this is unjustified, considering that their first quarter results were actually pretty good, but despite these results, their stock still trended downwards. Concerning their earnings results, Humana's revenue totaled around $29.6 billion, which was a healthy 14% higher on a year-over-year -year basis, and again, this is very good news. However, investors may be reacting negatively to their steep decline in their net income, which fell by around 23%. This caused their net income to drop under $1.2 billion to around $7.31 per share. But let me tell you why this would be unjustified. The reason why I don't think investors should be selling based off of this news is because both of these headline figures actually beat consensus analyst estimates. As an example, Analysts thought the company was going to bring in $28.5 billion worth of revenue, but they actually brought in $29.6 billion, so this beat was very positive. Likewise, analysts thought the company was going to bring in $6.12 per share, but they actually brought in $7.31 per share. So again, they beat on this estimate as well. Therefore, I do not think investors are justified in selling the stock right now. Humana themselves even said that these better-than-expected numbers were mainly due to administrative expenses that came in lower than anticipated. So this company brought in a beat in regards to the revenue, and they also beat concerning their earnings per share while lowering administrative expenses. And and that's why I think investors are unjustified for selling the stock right now. But why do you need to know this? Well, the reason why I'm telling you this is because right now could be a good buying opportunity because buying fundamentally strong companies on weakness is a great growth strategy to build your wealth over the long term. So I'd love to hear your thoughts about the story down below in the comments. Next up, let's talk about another favorite stock of mine, which is none other than Amazon, ticker symbol AMZN. And this one analyst believes this company could surge up to $230 over the next 12 months in their share price. 
If you didn't know, Amazon, ticker symbol AM at ZN, is mainly known for their e-commerce segment. However, this company has a multitude of revenue sources, which we will talk about a little later. In the meantime, let's focus on this $230 price target, which would imply 30% upside for investors who invest right now over the next year. According to a recent research note, Amazon is one week away from their scheduled first quarter earnings release. And many analysts, as well as myself, believe this is going to be very positive. Analysts right now are particularly confident that the company will make a good showing in regards to their advertising revenue, and I completely agree. Now, some may think that the price target of $230 per share for this company is too bullish. However, Amazon realistically could achieve this. And I personally think this is one of the best stocks to buy right now on the stock market, especially if you are a long-term investor. And with that being said, don't forget to go ahead and annihilate that like button right now. Subscribe if you are new. Comment down below your thoughts about any or all of these stories. With that being said, I will see you in the next YT video.